Now, as we were telling you a little bit earlier, it was just hours until he was supposed to be executed. But Richard Glossop, who's on death row in America, has been given an 11th hour stay of execution this evening. Let's take a closer look at uh, the death penalty around the globe here because I'm joined now by Lydia Lucente. She's Assistant Director at Amicus. It's a charity that provides legal support to prisoners on death row. It's great to have you here you. with us. Let's just take a look, first of all, at the countries around the globe that use the death penalty because you can see that they are in the minority, aren't they? And they vary they quite a bit in mm -hmm. terms of how much they actually implement it. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, only three countries that uh, use the death penalty more than the US and they are Iran, Iraq and Saudi Arabia, North Korea and China don't actually publish figures there. So where does that put uh, the US in terms of uh, this global position? Really? Well, the global position of the US is the fact that it is right behind Iraq in the highest rate of execution mm -hmm. currently, um, which I think puts it as at a disadvantage. I mean, the fact that it's in that that number, those types of countries, um, I think has a political impact on the US and its human rights policies. Indeed. Well, let's take a closer look at the US because it's not all states. Uh, we should say 31 states still have the power to impose the death penalty. Most of them don't actually carry it out. Uh, in 2013, if you take a look at the numbers there, nine states executed at least one prisoner. If you take a look at the last year, that fell to six. And actually, if you look at this year, uh, the number's even smaller so far this year. Uh, Georgia, Florida, uh, Oklahoma, Missouri, Texas have put a prisoner to death. And overall, the use of the death penalty has been in steady decline, hasn't it? If we look since 2000, we've seen it decline, what, just 20 in the current year so far. So what's going on there? I think that there's a number of reasons why there's a decline in the amount of executions that are being carried out. So, for instance, it's the cost, mm -hmm. it's the change in the political climate, it's the innocence that is being brought up, and it's the use of the lethal injection, which the with the botched executions that are currently happening. Um, so I think that the primary reason that I think that citizens are very concerned about is the is the innocence element and the fact that right now, I mean, we've already had 155 people that have been exonerated from death row alone wow. and 13 in the last three years. My goodness. Um, so though there are different peaks that happen, at the same time, we can see there is a steady decline from 1999. But just to be aware that though there is a decline, we do have, there is still a steady rate of people that are being charged with capital offenses and are being sentenced. That actually has stayed steady. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, you mentioned there the lethal injection, which, as you're saying, is now uh, the method of uh, execution for all states. And the process is, is three stages, really, isn't it? Because first of all, uh, there's sodium pyrpental. Now, that is a sedative and anesthetic that puts the inmate uh, to sleep. After that, uh, pancoronium bromide is actually administered that paralyzes the inmate and finally after that uh, potassium chloride so that actually uh, stops the heart eventually however as uh, you were saying there critics actually say this can be quite an inhumane uh, way of executing people lethal, lethal injections now these are the figures since the 1980s over seven percent mm -hmm. of those botched and in actual fact people might recall as well a controversial case last year uh, the execution of this man here he is clayton lockett now he arrived in pain for 43 minutes before he eventually died of a heart attack so why are these uh, executions being botched like this what's going on the main reason at this point in time is because of the fact that the drugs that the u.s is able to get their hands on is very limited and the quality is basically unchecked because they're using compound pharmacies this was an this. untested combination this drugs, was isn't it? exactly and so you have for instance um and the reason for that is because of the eu and the british ban on exporting um drugs that are being used in these executions in 2010 and so because of the untested methods that are being used you have cases like Clayton Lockett that are happening and the benefit if you do say that if I use that word is the fact that now that's raising awareness with regards to the issues surrounding the death penalty and its use but if it were to if those, those three stages that we described there mm -hmm. were to work and they were able to get hold of those drugs would that be humane in my opinion, I don't think that the state has a right and I don't think that it is humane ever for the state to execute a person. Okay.
And just to also point out, though, with Clayton Lockett, mm -hmm. there was actually midazolam that was used as a sedative, and that was also what led to the petition for Glossop and Gross, which is obviously the situation, the case that is now um, currently being discussed. Indeed, and we wait to see what happens now yes. next. Lydia, listen, great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.